It's the MasterChef finals. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. Well, I've definitely got a chance to win, and I, I think I can do it. I really want this. This is one tough competition. I want the prize more than ever, so I'm going to fight for it. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Matt, Andy and Christopher are the MasterChef finalists. Tonight, they'll be going where no other amateur cooks have gone before, Buckingham Palace. Just look at the grandeur of the occasion. Just look at the beauty of the environment. I feel totally intimidated. The idea of being in the kitchens of Buckingham Palace sends a shiver down the spine. How they're feeling right now, I have no idea. Definitely there's an element of nerves about what's coming up. Ah! It's getting tougher by the day, some um, daunting stuff. I'm scared stiff of what's coming next, but I'm absolutely determined. It's do or die, because only one will be crowned MasterChef champion. In just 24 hours, the finalists will have to cater for the staff at Buckingham Palace, creating a menu from the palace larder. To help them practice, they have to create two dishes from the same main ingredient, salmon fillet. Decent and good are not words you hear of a MasterChef champion. Flair, elegance, these are the words that are attached to a MasterChef champion. We want two beautiful plates of food. Let's cook. The contestants have one hour to make two dishes. As well as salmon fillet, they can also choose from a range of other ingredients, including fennel, celeriac, chili, tomatoes, courgettes, pasta, and spinach. I want to see craft, I want to see elegance, I want to see style. Matt dreams of swapping his suit for a family-run restaurant near the sea. The smart thing is to stay in my corporate job and take the salary and enjoy the benefits that brings. But that's not what I'm passionate about. Throughout the competition, Matt's rustic hearty fare has blown the judges away. They're incredible. That's a cracking shortbread. That is lovely. But often his food tastes better than it looks. It's like a really giant baby. <laughs> The competition's become hugely important. It's, it's, you know, taken over my home life, it's taken over everything at the moment. So I, I want to do well and I want to win this thing. What are your two dishes? Thai fish cakes with a sweet chilli dip and poached salmon in a, a vegetable fish stock base. What do you think you've got to do today to really shine? I want you guys to really enjoy what I cook, be blown away with the favours and present it well. Asian flavours with European leek and celeriac in there, I am unsure of. It's uncharted territory still. Fortune favours the brave. You have 25 minutes left. 25. 24-year-old Christopher has proved he has an extraordinary natural talent. Very good, very accomplished dish. Thanks. This is straight haze. It's absolutely perfect in every respect. But in the heat of competition, his inexperience often lets him down. Yeah, pretty stressed out at the moment. There's still a massive amount of work to do with my dish. 
I've kind of always done everything a little bit sort of half-hearted and suddenly you think actually this is a really big chance and a big deal. I definitely think that this is a, an opportunity for me just to grab it and be focused on something that I love doing. My first dish I'm going to do salmon on papillot. Um, I'm going to serve that with a celeriac mash and I'm going to do a pasta course. A little bit kind of carbonara based but with the salmon and some courgette. Can you raise what you've done so far? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you that I can up my game. I've, I've cooked some good food to get this far, but I've definitely got more dishes in the bag that are, that are better than what I've done already. This of his youth, the bit of experience, and his lack of repertoire, he has to really pull out the bag. You've got 15 minutes left, gentlemen. 15 minutes. Comeback contestant Andy has dedicated the last year to winning MasterChef. When I came into the competition, I was quite confident. I worked hard on my dishes, and I knew I had some good dishes in the, in the bank. And when it matters most, he's produced some stunning food. I think he's got the tuna cooked just perfectly. That's very difficult. It works. I agree with you entirely. It's spot on. It's, it's nice. The skin's really crispy and nice and salty. It's really good. But a lack of focus and attention to detail can be his downfall. Hang on, 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 hang on. Really is a bit sloppy. OK. Right, guys, they're on their way in now. Are you going to be ready? It's been a roller coaster, and my, probably my confidence now is probably a notch lower than it was when I walked in the doors. But that's not a bad thing. I think that just means I'm more self-aware. I reckon. What are your two dishes then? Uh, I'm going to do salmon ravioli with like a, a fennel cream, and then I'm going to do something totally different, like a, an Indian-style piece of salmon with a herb marinade and a coconut sauce. It's all about flavour, it's all about texture, but I like his ambition. Two minutes to finish off your plates, please. Two minutes. Thirty seconds, guys. Thirty seconds. Time's up. Time's up. Have the finalists managed to create two exceptional salmon dishes from scratch? Andy's first dish is a salmon ravioli with a fennel cream sauce. Sauce is nice, sweet, slight aniseed. Beautiful looking dish, lots of cookery skill going into it. Well done. Thank you. I love the pasta, I think it's really well made. You know, you work very, very hard, Andy. When you're under pressure, you decide to deliver, and we see that today. Brilliant. For his second dish, Andy's made herb marinated salmon in an Indian curry sauce. I think the, the coriander, the coconut, the salmon, a little bit of mint works very, very well. Mm. But the lime, the lime is, is overpowering. And I'd like some real chilli right. slap round the yeah. face, yeah. Really good concept. The salmon's cooked absolutely perfectly. It just needs heat. I think I've shown some, some good skills today, but I also have shown that I'm not, I'm not quite there yet. Matt's first salmon dish is Thai fish cakes with sweet chilli sauce. Uh, love your fish cakes. I think they look great. Sweet chilli heat, lovely. And the salmon actually manages to come through that powerful flavour at right. the end. Thanks, I made up, yeah. It looks elegant and it delivers big time. Not very often we come up to your bench, Matt, and say your food looks good. Great, thank you. His second dish is poached salmon in an Asian broth. 
leek and celeriac and the crunchy neutral juice of that bok choy is lovely but the salmon is washed away almost I quite like the presentation of it. This sort of clear broth with this sort of punchy flavours, which is fresh and exciting compared to your very, very sort of, you know, rich starter. Hopefully, I've shown you I'm progressing. For his first dish, Christopher has made salmon on papillote, braised fennel, a creamy caper sauce with spinach and celeriac mash. I do enjoy those flavours up to a point. But the amount of sweet acidity, sort of perno acidity that comes through that fennel heaps on at the end. Uh, the salmon is nicely cooked, your sauce is nicely made. This definition of flavour for me is the issue. I do think you've got to make sure those flavours work. Will Christopher's salmon carbonara make a better impression? I actually think the courgette is a mistake because it's a watery veg where you really want to be packing seasoned salmon through that spaghetti. But it wants seasoning. There is still this issue with you tasting stuff. I just kind of got a little bit of cooking fear at the moment and I'm just kind of too worried about making like a really glaring mistake and not going with my instincts. I think what we asked of these guys today was tough. Very, very tough indeed. We, on the most part, got inventive, flavoursome, well-presented dishes. I think young Christopher now has a bit of work to do to catch up with the other two. I'm disappointed. Christopher today didn't cook his best. And I know that he can do really, really well in this competition. He's got to believe it. That's the issue. I just need to stop worrying too much. I just need to go back to what I can do and just be confident, let it kind of flow out naturally. And he worked very hard today. Pasta with salmon in it, sauce, a scattering of herbs. I think his dish looked lovely. He does have to be able to concentrate and make sure he gets it right. Matt, most certainly, is getting there. He knows he can deliver flavour. He is fighting very, very hard to make his dishes look elegant. The guy is just getting better and better and more exciting as a cook. They've learnt lessons here today. I hope they remember them, because tomorrow's task is going to be one of the toughest I think we've yet seen. What's coming next? I know it's going to be something huge. I'm very, very nervous. The expectation is rising and, you know, the prize is, is massive. So, yeah, it's right there and we've just got to reach out and grab it. This is a massive competition and a massive opportunity, so I really need to be switched on and focused about winning. I feel totally intimidated. Fucking house. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. I don't think this takes much of an introduction. Of course, you are at Buckingham Palace. You are going to be cooking for over 400 staff here today. You will be cooking lunch. And, gentlemen, I wish you the best of luck. Christopher, Matt and Andy will be cooking where no other amateurs have cooked before, in the Royal Kitchen, overseen by Royal Chef Mark Flanagan. He's cooked for the most influential people in the world. Welcome to Buckingham Palace. Got quite a day ahead of you. 
you know, I don't want to put the pressure on anymore, but you know, some of this will have been used during the state banquets for King George, Queen Victoria. You know, you're at, you're adding to the tradition. Good luck with that, but be careful with them too, yeah? Okay, let's go. In just three and a half hours, they'll have to serve lunch to over 400 members of the royal household. The idea of being in the kitchens of Buckingham Palace sends a shiver down the spine. How they're feeling right now, I have no idea. Peppers. Today, Matt has been appointed team leader. OK, so you've got pl plenty of produce to choose from. Uh, amazing place to be. You can uh, feel the history of it. Completely terrified of what's ahead. First, they have to design a menu from the fresh ingredients available in the royal larder. They'll have to make a meat main course, one fish and a vegetarian option, as well as a dessert each. This time of year, Buckingham Palace opens its gates to visitors, which means there's more staff here, it's busier than it usually is, they don't have very long for lunch, they need to get in, eat well and get back to work. That's an added pressure. Limited amount of time, limited ingredients, they're going to have to work fast, they're going to have to be organised, use every single lesson they've learned so far and get on with it. What we thought about is for the meat, do a nice uh, slow-cooked lamb shoulder, fish, sea bream with a ratatouille, for the veg, um, eat some of the veg, make a, a Thai curry. That's great. Nice. That looks really interesting, guys. We're definitely going to have to get the lamb in if we're yeah, slow cooking yeah, it. Yeah. Andy's in charge of the lamb to be served with vegetables and dauphinoise potatoes. And for dessert, a fresh fruit salad. The lamb will take over two hours to slow cook and there's 30 kilos of meat to prepare. Okay, if, mate, if you just lob rosemary and garlic in each yeah, day, no, just a bit of each. I've got a bad feeling about timing today. We've got so much to do, and, um, you know, it really is just us and chef. OK, boys, how does it go? Uh, not bad, chef, but we need to get this in uh, you, re you do really need to get it in pronto. They've all spent 25 minutes on the lamb. Now Christopher must rush to prep 50 kilos of fruit and veg for his sea bream with ratatouille and new potatoes, followed by pear and apple crumble. Christopher really needs to have a big round here today. He needs it to push himself back into contention. The last couple of days haven't been the best for me, so, you know, I'd like to come out on top today. Meanwhile, team leader Matt is unsure where to focus his energy. Matt hasn't actually produced anything. He just seems to be uh, worrying a lot about what everybody else is doing and not a little bit behind on his own tasks. He needs to crack on with his vegetarian Thai curry and cheesecake pudding. You've got to move quick. Chef. You, you've got to go. You, you, you haven't got time. With only an hour and a half until service, will his cheesecake set in time? It's 10 a.m. and the palace opens to visitors. Up to 400 members of the royal household will be expecting lunch, including the horsemen, nurses, footmen, admin, and guards. With so many people to feed, every second counts. We have strict deadlines, and we must stick to those. There's now just an hour until service begins. Christopher has prepped his sea bream and ratatouille, but he's still got 80 portions of crumble to make. I could be here till next week still peeling apples at this rate, because there's just so much prep to do and, uh, you know, the time's really ticking on. Andy's behind making his potato dauphinoise, and he hasn't started on his fresh fruit salad. 
and Matt has only just started cooking his 100 portions of vegetable Thai curry. How much more chopping has to be done for this dish? I've got most of what I need. I need a, a few more um, mushrooms, but I've got enough to get the dish on right, so to get the first batch of portions so out. Start your cooking. Yep. Go and get your raw mushrooms. Set yourself on the work place, and while you stir it, do your food prep. Mark, it looks like it's ferocious in there right now. There seems to be little time and a huge amount still to do. That's, that's a pretty accurate way of putting it, to be honest. What's the worst case scenario here, Chef? We have a plan B. In a nearby kitchen, the chef has secretly organised standby fish and chips. You've got backup dishes so that if they don't make it, their dishes don't go out. That would be a disaster for our guys, a disaster. I think that would upset them. We've just got half an hour before service now, guys, OK? Yes, sir. I've got a um, fruit salad to do and a lot of work to finish my main course, so everybody has not enough time to do what they've got to do. The clock's ticking. Matt is forced to take drastic action. We're not going to make 11.15 at this rate. We need some help. Yeah. The royal sous chefs are drafted in. It's not an option not to get our dishes out on time. It's not an option to feed them badly either. Outside, the crowds gather for the changing of the guard, which starts at 11.30 a.m. precisely. At the same time, the first batch of food must be ready. I don't know if I'm going to get done. Yeah, the pressure's on. As long as they can rally, they may be able to make it by the skin of their teeth. The changing of the guard approaches, and the queue starts building. I've got 15 minutes to eat my lunch, so uh, hopefully they'll be open in a minute. No time to spare, and we really have to just go 100 miles an hour. It's 11.30, and the doors open. But Christopher's sea bream is the only dish on offer. You're ahead of the game. You're, you're going to run out first. Right, OK. Because you're the only one that's getting it out on, on time with everything complete. OK, and same well show. done. Thank you. Bit of good news for me for a change on the on the final, really, but, um, yeah, you know, it's a result. Excellent. Matt's vegetarian Thai curry and Andy's lamb and potatoes are next to go up. But something's missing. We need some green beans. We haven't got any green beans up here at all. Sorry, no vegetables. We need the veg. Mm, yes. OK, oh. thank you. We're definitely up against it. No time to spare. Finally, all the main courses are up. I know it's really tense down there. I understand it's been fought, but our three finalists have actually got the food up here. They've coped. I don't know whether they've succeeded. I think they are hanging on by their fingertips. Now the contestants need to get their desserts out fast. Once again, Christopher's up first with his apple and pear crumble. Some of the other rounds haven't gone quite my way, so uh, hopefully I can make up for it today. But not everyone is on target. Jeff's been helping me, John's been helping me. 
Matt still needs to get his second cheesecake out. It's not set and it's only holding together because it's frozen. We're going to have to do something because you're not going to be able to rustle anything else up. So we're going to look to see whether we can serve this in a bowl. Yeah, maybe put an extra topping, okay. your biscuit topping over the top. Nothing, doesn't it? Things do and have gone on. 40 minutes after service began, all the dishes have finally been served. Today, I had vegetable Thai curry, very tasty indeed. I quite like Thai food, usually go for green Thai curries, things like that when I eat out. This is very tasty, yeah, very aromatic. I've chosen um, the lamb because the lamb's one of my favourites and also the potato dauphinoise, which I also love. I chose the cheesecake, but I was a little worried it might have been a bit nouvelle cuisine today, and thankfully it isn't. You know? So, um, yeah, I think it fits in reasonably well. So, do you do that kind of number uh, most days? Every day. We do it ourselves. Three of you. Yeah. You should you should be proud of what you've done. You know, um, you you were very calm. You're not standing in the corner crying, are you? So you've done all right. It's been a tough couple of days. After a disastrous start. Christopher has regained his confidence. Yeah, it's, um, it's been really hard today. It's been, like, manic and definitely, definitely broken a sweat today. You know, I don't think I've let myself down. Andy's dishes continued to impress, but once again he struggled with his timings. You know, I would like to have got my, all my dishes out of time and done them all myself. You know, constant lesson for me is about organisation, and I think I haven't nailed that yet. Matt wowed the judges with exceptional food, but today he felt the pressure. I'm disappointed we didn't get the dishes quite on time. I think we all hugely underestimated just how much there was to do. Next time, it's make or break. We are way, way behind. They're just sitting now. We need to get a shift on, yes? as these three amateurs are forced to prove what they're really made of. Quick as you can, yeah? That was executed to perfection. If I was not on a diet, I would finish a dish.